Good morning, everybody. I'm Sean Cullen. I'm in the Geological Survey, and I'm managing the project with uh, Tommy Fury here from the Marine Institute. I'm going to just give you a, a kind of a brief update on Inframar and talk about the past, the present, and the future. Um, last night, brought back the past very vividly when Mick Gagan came into the pub last night and uh, we had a good few pints with them and talked about the old days of the Irish National Seabed Survey. You know, that was back in I think, 1999 that PAD first started mapping the, the far off uh, deep waters of, of Ireland. And right through until today, we've been slowly getting closer and closer to the coast. I remember spending six weeks here in Dingle in 2014. I think it was one of the best summers we had this century. And, uh, yeah, getting in around Inish, Wicklow and those islands with absolutely no swell was, was really amazing. And it's, it's, you know, it's one of the great pleasures of this job is that you get so close to the places around Ireland that very few people actually get to see. So, yeah, so I mean, you know, it's been an ongoing project, as Kroon said, a lot of it to do with the, the, the actual day-to-day -day acquisition of data. But then the data has to be you know, delivered to people that want to use it. And another blast from the past is to see uh, Brendan Tui here today. He's our old uh, sec gen for the department. And it was really him that um, came up with a policy that many people now copy, where the, the data is made available for free to anybody to download and do what they can with it. That then in turn obviously feeds into the, the four to one return that the cost benefit analysis uh, recognized. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say once again, thanks to thanks to Brendan for that. Coming you know, uh, more into the present now, uh, the, the ongoing work is now, we've done all the, the 26 priority bays around Ireland, and are now sort of doing a continuous sweep around, uh, around the country, going around in a, in a clockwise direction. We are now, just sort of finishing up on the south coast for, for this year, and hopefully by the end of um, next year we should be completed all the way from Carlingford to Dingle. Maybe a few more bits to go back and, and clean up. But that, that's kind of the plan, and it is going according to plan, and we do hope to finish by the end of 2026. And as Queen mentioned, we did get the uh, member to government through and approved for the funding right to the end of the project. As part of that memo, we also put in a, um, a statement, I guess, that we would review the project in 2023 with a view to what would happen after 2026. So that's really something we're gonna to have to really work on in the next three years to come up with a, a good strategy <coughs> for the future um, post Inframar. I think you know, Inframar is such a good brand name now that we'll probably continue with Inframar and add on a 2 or a 5D <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just you know, in terms of the present, the, the, the Marine Institute vessels are still working way out offshore and add on for sure. We'll be updating us on the new vessel that will be coming on screen in about two years' time. So that will be very interesting. And I was actually just talking to somebody here just shortly uh, just before we started about then a private concern building a, a sailing uh, survey vessel, which would be quite interesting. Um, the, the vessels of the GSI are running us to the Kiri and the Manus of the two bigger boats, and we have the two ribs, the, the Lear and the Geo. We also have um, a second uh, 11 meter rib which should be delivered next week. And as it stands, it's just known as the layer two. So I'd like to invite everybody here today, if you have any suggestions for a name for this new boat, um, either to speak to myself later on, or you know, maybe leave a suggestion with the guys at the front desk there. In general, we, you'll notice that all the boat names are quite short, and that's really to help out with the phonetic spelling when you're dealing with the Mayday or something. <laughs> Caution to all bread on was a nightmare. <laughs> Charlie asked them, what's a father? <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, we'd be more than happy to, to, to take any suggestions for that. Um, 
The, the other sort of thing that's just happened recently, I guess, is, is Peter Heffernan has left the Marine Institute, and as uh, Paul Connolly, who's quite engaged with ICs and that, is uh, going to be taking over. So we're really looking forward, forward to a whole new phase with the, the MI. However, Peter is a man too far away. He's got a direct, um, you know, he's a member of the board for the, the mission in, in the EU, which will be dealing with the marine and coastal environments. So, you know, he, he hasn't disappeared at all, and I think he will, he will still continue to be quite a big influence on what happens with Informa going forward. Another new change in, in, in our own department is that uh, Philip Nugent, who was with Housing and Planning and really responsible for the whole green spatial planning, um, has taken up a new position with us as an assistant sec, and he will be essentially will be our, our main boss to deal with. Um, so he has, he has a, a really interesting background in the marine space as well through the planning side. And, uh, and I think that's going to be another big plus for us. You know. So um, the, the future looks good in terms of direction. And as Kurt mentioned as well, uh, the Norwegians have just uh, funded a, a big project for their coastal mapping, in addition to the Mariana project. Um, it seems likely and probable that we will then um, take on a, you know, or sign up with an MOU with them to, um, for, you know, to learn from them and they will learn from us and see what we can do in terms of you know, uh, spreading the knowledge that we've acquired over these last 20 years. As I said, it is 20 years, it's 1999 to, to 2019 and next year, uh, we hope to have the, the 21st birthday of Seabed Mapping in, in Ireland. So we, we're planning on quite a big uh, seminar in, I think it's the 4th and 5th of December next year. And uh, that will be held in Dublin Castle. So the planning and the invitations and everything are, are all going for the end of that now. So it should be a, quite a big international event. And uh, again, you know, we'd like to get out into the <coughs> the edges of the country where they are doing the work, such as down here. But uh, I think for that one, you, you'll all be more than welcome up and down. In the future, yeah, the, I've mentioned uh, the NSP. That's a big thing you know, coming down the tracks for us to feed into. And a lot of that's going to be um, very coastal focused as well. The Ordnance Survey Island are actually going to have to take on survey responsibility into further out than the high water mark. And I think there's going to be a coastal area that will fall over there, remote. So that's a whole new agency that we're going to have to engage with on the marine side. Um, they just had a very good conference in Dublin a couple of weeks ago with GeoGov. Um, and Colin Bray at last has recognized that uh, gravity and water has a lot to do with each other. And <laughs> the vertical data that we use do need revision. The other you know, instrumentation I mean, with the data acquisition that we do is also you know, through the Cherish pro project that you'll hear about shortly this afternoon, is um, you know, utilizing drones and, and remote sensing from space. And I think that will bring us up to speed on that. But there's really exciting technology coming on board. And uh, as we go over the next few years, I think we're going to become you know, global leaders, really, in integrating all of that data. Uh, Peter Heffern's latest uh, mantra, if you like, is this, the, which they are now using for the U UN Decade of the Oceans, is to map, observe, and predict. And that's something I think you'll be hearing a lot of in the future. And, and it makes sense, and it fits into this talk nicely, because map is in the past, observe is the present, and the future is the prediction and the modeling that's required. What am I doing with time? <laughs> so yeah, so the, um, yeah, the, the UN Decade of the Ocean is going to be a, a, a big push to try and also get the, the whole of the, of the globe's waters mapped. Uh, and there's a Seabed 2030, which has been pushed by the IHO and the UN. And we've been very successful in getting two people, one from MI and one from the GSI, to um, get funding from the Nippon Foundation, which supports GEMCO, 
and uh, is Aileen as well then. She'll give us a talk and an update on that later. And, um, and Michaela, who's, oh, Michaela Day, is it? Yeah, who's currently on the course. And that's really given us a, a high profile in that international arena. And Tommy and I have been to a few of these uh, CBA 2030 conferences around the world. And it's exciting stuff. It's, it's very uh, ambitious. But Ireland will be one of the countries that has probably contributed the most to that entire plan. And I think that's something we should be really proud of. As I said, I mean, there's not much more that I can tell you guys now uh, without stepping on other toes. And uh, I could, I could um, show you lots of pictures of nice wrecks, but uh, somebody else would be upset. I might leave it there if I uh, can. Uh, <clears throat> that always used to be McGagan's trick, wasn't it? Can you give me a look at your presentations you're going to give at the seminar? Can you steal all the best slides and show them all? What's that, everyone? And next up is, is Roman, Roman O'Toole. Uh, Roman is a senior GL at, uh, at, at GL in Survey Ireland on the on, on Infomar and the Human Program for a long time now, Roman. 2006. 2006, wow. And, uh, so himself and Owen McGrath, who's one of our party chiefs looking after the intro vessels, uh, put the talk together. So this really an update on the, on the 2019 